morning, everybody. I'm here with a man who really needs no introduction. Since there's no one else that's going to talk up for him, it's up to me. Ted, how are you today? You know, David, I can always count on you putting a smile on my face. And uh, we get together. So uh, always happy to be here. Thanks for the, for the wonderful introduction. I didn't know what to expect. But, well, that makes uh, two of us. <laughs> what are we here to talk about today? <laughs> I will tell you. I'm actually really, really pumped about this. This is some, This is a about a company I just heard about, and I I know based on how long each of us have been in business, it's going to be interesting to you as well. Check this out. This is a company. They're using a very, very old school uh, approach to certain things in a very sort of new technology vibe and way. Here's the thing: they just opened up a 32,000 square foot store in Soho. The average customer spends roughly two hours in their store. The, uh, the, one of the owners said, we don't sell online because we don't believe these products should be bought online. Okay. And everything they, everything that they actually have is there for completely for display. The place is called Perch, right? And it, they opened up their store. They have eight stores nationwide. They started in San Diego. They're now in Soho and they sell, uh, you know, grills, uh, stuff for the kitchen, not decor, not home decor stuff, but actual functional stuff, shower stalls and stuff like that. But the thing that's different, you and I go in there, we actually get to use it. Uh, we get to use it in terms of if you want to make a pizza in the pizza oven, you can make a pizza. If you actually want to go and take a shower in their place that they call sanctuary, you schedule a time, you can go in there to actually check, do you like the feel of the shower head and the whole deal? And it is completely experiential. It's awesome, and their revenue for 2015 is already 225 million bucks, nearly doubling its growth year over year, okay? So I found this fascinating. Oh, and here's the other thing. When you start there, you actually stop at their Bliss Cafe, which is a full-service coffee counter stocked with complimentary cappuccinos, cucumber water, and lemonade that customers can grab as they enter the store. I think that it is brilliant. I find it interesting because it goes back to a very fundamental old school thing, which you and I know as sampling, you know, which has been around for like 50, 60, 70 years. And I just thought it was fascinating because they're putting a new spin on it and they're breaking all the rules and they're crushing it as far as sales. So I want to just get your take on that. What do you, because there's customer experience. There's also completely disagreeing with, Oh, we have to sell online. Otherwise we're going to die. Um, and they're actually making it so it's not, they're breaking the other rule of, you know what? You can look, but you can't touch. They're doing the exact opposite. And actually, if you look at Apple's store, it was similar in that way too, that they made it experiential rather than just having a crap load of product like that you'd find at Best Buy. I'm just curious what insights that you see with this kind of model, because I found this fascinating. And I just, I just thought it was something that we could talk about. So I can talk now? <laughs> I didn't know if you were ever going to stop. I kept, they kept being in these pauses and I kept getting ready to jump in. Now, and now I should have had notes because I, I think I'm forgetting all the things I wanted to say. But first of all, I love it. And what I love about it most, forget about anything else, is that they're, they're just coming up with a new way to, sh to shop. They're, they're taking new technology. They're going back to old world. They're combining different ideas. It, it's not necessarily new. I've seen these concepts a number of times. But like Adam Grant talks about, you know, the professor at Wharton, is that very often first movers, first mover status is not the best. It isn't get out there and do it fast. It's figure it out because very often it's the third or fourth try that actually makes it. Now, I met some guys... I would say it was about four years ago now, who were building a store like this in South Jersey. I'm not sure if they're still around. They certainly haven't blown up because I haven't heard about it, but they were doing it for, um, for baby um, 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 strollers, car seats, all the different things you use with their families. How many of us buy these things? And then we find out it doesn't have this, it doesn't have what we wanted, it doesn't work, it doesn't fit in our car. And they set up this amazing showroom. Again, you couldn't walk out with anything. It all got delivered. And you went through the store and you put the car seat in the car and they had half cars there and you could like do all these kinds of things. You could use the strollers. They had, they had grass, they had, um, they had dirt, they had, they had all different types of places, terrain that you could test these things. And it was, it was a brilliant concept. 
Uh, again, I'm not sure if it's still there. I'm not sure how well financed they were. The guy was a really smart guy and was trying to do something different. But I love the idea because, again, he was saying, I get that things have to get delivered. I get I can't have all this space to keep all this stuff in the back and pay for that real estate and do these things. But people do like to try a lot of different things. And I'm, he, he was thinking just like these guys, instead of the Zappos model of just send all the shit out and send back what you don't use and also they they rely a lot on the breakage knowing that you won't send back some shoes you might have right. just because it's too much of a hassle or what the hell they almost fit or they're not too much extra or you just forget right um, these guys are trying to take it one step further and make the experience really good i love the idea of checking out the shower <laughs> oh, but, but you know but you know what's incredible about the shower they actually have it set up so that you can with a swipe on your ipad actually activate the shower head so they've totally incorporated the all of the sort of little bits of technology that you and I and everyone take, always have with them. And you know, Samsung is doing this too. Samsung opened a store in New York that you can't buy anything at. It's a purely experiential store. Oh. Sit and watch TV, sit in your own home theater, do all these kinds of things. It's where a lot of this is going. I, from what I've heard, this sounds like the first guys that have really started scaling it. Yeah. You know, at, at big numbers and, and, you know, for me, and I talk to John Andrews a lot about this, the future of retail, there is no one future of retail. It, yeah. It's, it's experimenting. It's figuring out what works. These guys have obviously figured out a formula. Um, it sounds pretty cool. I mean, I'm just about to renovate um, a new home in Florida, a two-bedroom apartment, and something I was just thinking about was, you know, I need to do these bathrooms, and this is probably going to be where I'm going to live for a lot of years going forward. And the last thing, I'm the guy that even once I buy the shirt, if it's not perfect, I don't want to get rid of it as long as it's still good and get another one and waste that money. So imagine me trying to redo my shower a year after I just did it. Right. Because it didn't have something I wanted. So I love this concept. I, you know, I, I think that it has to be very well thought out. It sounds like these guys, at least at this point, have done it. I'm not oh, sure what nice. the first store looked like. Oh, it's um, unbelievable. Look, it's you know, yesterday I, I was emceeing an event, and there were some challenger, challenger brands there. One of them is a, a company called Gregory's Coffee, founded by this guy named Gregory. Gregory. <laughs> whose, name, whose, whose last name happens to be coffee <laughs> and, he's, and he's clearly in a space that people would say oh it's overfilled there's so many coffee shops starbucks owns the space but then there's pete's and there's all these other ones and then there's one-off deals he has built in the last eight years he's got 16 units he's totally got his model down and now he's ready to really expand and what he's done in his eyes and apparently a lot of other people's and I can't say because I haven't been there yet is he thinks he's totally improved on the on the on the Starbucks model he's mm -hmm. gone in and seen all the, the the problems they have where it backlogs where there's people waiting people wanting to get in and out but the point being is he is just rethinking something that's already there he's using some stuff from the past some stuff from the future and creating a new experience so I would just say forget about the 225 million all the other stuff although that does show that it works because that right. is important. That's, that's proof, proof, of, it's proof of concept. Proof of concept. If, if there's no proof of concept, you know, this is wonderful, but who cares? Right. But I love it because I just think, I think that this is where the big brands, this is where the Walmarts of the world are missing it. I mean, uh, without question. You know, and do, yeah, I was making fun of you for going on. Do you mind if I go on a little bit more? I want you to talk longer than anybody's willing to listen. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that happens most of the time. <laughs> so I'll just say that, you know, it's perfect timing to have this discussion because I, I, Walmart just had their annual shareholders meeting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from what I know, I've known Walmart. I've been around. I've been to one of the, I was brought into one of their, um, their shareholders meetings three years ago as a, uh, an influencer. John Andrews has been, has been working with them for, uh, for since 2006 or something like that. And every year it's the same story. They're gonna bring digital together with real store and they're gonna figure it out and they're gonna challenge Amazon and they're gonna show them what, what's right and they're the kings of retail. The truth of the matter is they are the kings of old school retail and they certainly are by far bar none, but they can't change their culture enough to experiment with concepts like this. All they do is they go, like lately they're, we're gonna start incorporating a lot more technology. Oh really? Like, well, there's an idea. You know, we're going to start delivering more into the home. Or one of my favorites is they just started their own media group to create content to tell their story better. They're going to tell their story better. Right. Forget about all that's been going on in the world today with 
with, with consumers, with, with brand advocates, with employee advocates, all of them. No, they are just, it's, it's, it's old Walmart thinking. They're going to create the story, then they're going to distribute the story, and they're going to tell you what it's like it is. They're not going to let you tell them what it's like it is. Right. Right. And, and if they imagine where Walmart would be today, if only 10 years ago, I mean, when did Amazon start? 21 years ago, something like that. I think it was like 95 or something like that. If Walmart had opened their eyes even 10 years after that, in 2005, and said, damn, these guys are smart. They are really on the channel. They're figuring out how to make everybody work together. They're, I mean, do you know that Walmart still has separate buyers for their digital than they do for their stores? Separate buyers. Their, their digital is still based up in Silicon Valley because 20 years ago, that's where you have to go to get engineers, not yeah. the case anymore. And they can't bring it together. These two sides hate each other. And they're just not using the innovation and ingenuity. And you know, there are companies in history that have done it. Look at IBM, how they reinvented themselves. What, like every 10 or 15 years is a reason their stock is performing at the enormous strength it is and all these other companies that have learned how to do this. But in retail, I don't think we've seen it. We need to see new concepts. And it certainly wasn't Jet.com because selling shit cheaper just ain't the answer. Yep. Um, it's just a race to the bottom. Um, but these guys are really on it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So, Kudos, man. Let's figure out more ways to do this. Oh, I agree. I agree. So there's, so as far as a as far as a takeaway for our growing legion of followers, the the hundreds of thousands, the millions of individuals who will be listening to this communication that you and I have just shared. Millions. The takeaway. Disrupt your own business. It's the only way to stay relevant in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like and don't reject old ideas if they can actually be, be reinvented. put in a context for today's lifestyle. Look, look, I say this all the time. I think that we've come full circle. I think we've come from the time where everybody knew us, the merchants knew us, they knew our families, they knew what we liked, they knew if we didn't like what they recommended to us, we'd bring it back the next day and complain and tell all our neighbors. But then all of a sudden anonymity set in. We went to these big box stores. Women shopped in it with hair curlers. They thought nobody would know who they were. They thought the stores weren't actually tracking them when American Express has been tracking them since 1950. And then all of a sudden now, you know, people talk about our privacy being gone, but it's always been gone, except now we know that, that, that they're into our lives. And we expect value in return. So now it's come full circle because I expect a retailer to know me the way they used to know me because it's all there. It's on their iPad. It's on their phone. There's no reason. I mean, what is it going to be? Another two or three years, whether it's virtual reality or just holding up something and it gets my eyeballs in it and it knows exactly who I am in my host purchase history. I mean, like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk was just talking about, you know, Grant, virtual reality isn't here yet. There's some fun ways to play with it, but it, it won't be big goggles and big things. It'll be something that's implanted in our eyeballs. There you go. There so, you go. Eyeballs, baby. Eyeballs. Eyeballs. So. I got you. I'm, oh, I'm right, at, I'm right at you, man. I'm right at you. Please hang up and try again.